Hello, today I'm going to be reviewing Terra, the latest small form factor case from Fractal Design. And this case is really tiny at only 10.4 litres in size. It comes in three different colours. There's the silver that I've got here, but it's also available in graphite and jade. And it has an MSRP of $179.99 US dollars. So should this be your next case, stick around to find out. So in terms of the aesthetics, I think Fractal have done everything they can to give this case a really premium feel. The panels are made from anodized aluminium and are up to 8mm thick. And we've got a real walnut trim on the front panel. In terms of our front I.O., Fractal have stuck to the bare minimum with a power button and a single USB Type-A and single USB Type-C port. To remove the side panels, these need to be tilted out from the bottom. And then at the rear of the panel, there's a little button you need to push in. That frees up the back edge and then the panel can simply be lifted out. And the other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. If we take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you'll notice there's no dust filter on it. And in fact, there's not a single dust filter anywhere in the case. To remove the top panel, there's a leather tab at the back and we need to pull it backwards. And then the top panel can be lifted up and away. So the case features a standard sandwich style layout with the motherboard and power supply on one side and the graphics card on the other side. In terms of motherboard support, you're going to need to use a mini ITX motherboard. This is mounted upside down, and then you're going to use the included Gen 4 riser cable to connect this to your graphics card. The power supply is going to go over to the left-hand side of the motherboard, and the case is compatible with SFX and SFXL power supplies up to a maximum length of 130 millimeters. Installing your power supply is made a little bit easier using the case's removal bracket, allowing you to attach this to the power supply outside of the case. And if you do have a GPU with a flow through style cooler, it is possible using some included standoffs to move the power supply further away from the GPU, helping to improve cooling. Beneath the power supply, there's space for mounting either a 120 millimeter fan or two and a half inch drive on a removable bracket. However, this is only if you go with an SFX power supply, because if you use an SFXL power supply, it's too long to allow you to mount either a fan or two and a half inch drive. There's another two and a half inch drive mount on the back of the front panel. And the drive is secured here with Velcro straps. Moving over to the other side of the case, and this is where you're going to mount your GPU in the vertical position. And the case is compatible with GPUs up to a maximum length of 322 millimeters. Again, installing your GPU is made a little bit easier with another removable bracket, allowing you to install your GPU to the bracket outside of the case, simplifying the installation process. So now I want to come on to what I think is one of the coolest features of this case, and that is the ability to adjust the size of the CPU and GPU compartments. So we take a look at both the top and the bottom of the case. There's four screws with some numbers beside them, and the numbers go from one to seven. And by default, they're all installed in the middle position, number four. If we loosen the four screws, that is then going to allow us to adjust the middle spine of the case, sliding it to one side or the other, allowing us to increase the space for either the CPU or GPU compartment. With the screws all set to position one, that is gonna maximize the space on the motherboard side of the case, allowing you to install the biggest CPU cooler, which is up to a maximum height of 77 millimeters. That is gonna come at the expense of shrinking the width of the GPU compartment, which is gonna be reduced down to 43 millimeters if your GPU is less than 131 millimeters in height, or if your GPU is between 131 and 145 millimeters in height, it's going to come down to 33 millimeters. Sliding the spine all the way over to position number seven is going to maximize the width that you've got for your graphics card. And again, the width that you have is going to depend on the height of the graphics card. If your graphics card is less than 131 millimeters in terms of height, you've got up to an absolutely whopping 72 millimeters in thickness for your graphics card. Whereas if your graphics card is between 131 and 145 millimeters in height, you've got up to 62 millimeters of width for your graphics card. Again, this is gonna come at the expense of your CPU killer, and the maximum height for this is now reduced down to 48 millimeters. What's also really important to mention is you don't need to have the movable spine at the exact position of each of the numbers, and it is possible to have it at any position you want between any two of the numbers. It is possible to mount a 120 millimeter AIO over on the graphics card side of the case, although there's probably two reasons you might not want to do this. The first is it is going to significantly reduce the length you have for your graphics card, and this is going to be limited to only 200 millimeters in length. 
The other main limitation for me is that the radiator is going to be right up against your power supply, which I think is significantly going to interfere with the airflow. So what I want to do now is give you a look at the build I put together in the case. So take a look at our temperatures, our Ryzen 9 7900X being cooled by our low profile air cooler idled at 55 degrees and reached a maximum of 97 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. So take a look at the graph, you can see our CPU reached its maximum temperature within a matter of seconds of starting the stability test and there was some thermal throttling with our average clock speeds being 4.9 GHz. Our RTX 4070 idled at 30 degrees and reached a maximum temperature of 69 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, these were actually pretty good with an average of 41 decibels at idle and 47 decibels under load. So GPU temperature is very acceptable and it's not a big surprise our CPU performed the way it did. Um, the 7900X is a pretty difficult CPU to cool and I only had a low profile CPU cooler on it. So this is actually fairly similar to what happened in the Fractal Ridge. Now what I did during that build, it was exactly the same motherboard, CPU and cooler. So I did the same thing that I did with that build. I entered the BIOS and enabled PBO with TJ Maxx set to 85 degrees. Repeating the thermal testing, this brought the maximum CPU temperature down by 10 degrees during the stability test. And the noise levels came down by one decibel at idle and two decibels under load. However, this came at the expense of reducing our average CPU clock speeds during the stability test by 300 megahertz. I did run a Cinebench multi-core test on both configurations and enabling PBO and TJ Maxx set to 85, there was only a 3.1% reduction in the score. So I think bringing CPU temperatures down by 10 degrees at only 3% hit in terms of performance does make sense to me. Although probably going with a really powerful, difficult to cool CPU in such a small case, being only cooled with an air cooler and a low profile air cooler at that is probably not the best idea. And I think if you are building in this case, building with an easier to cool CPU is probably the way to go. Now, in terms of further thermal testing, there's only really one fan mounting slot in this case at the bottom. So really the only other thing that I could test was seeing if removing that fan made any difference to the temperatures. So removing the bottom fan, which had been previously set to intake, our CPU idled one degree cooler. There was no difference to the maximum CPU temperature under load, although I wouldn't expect any because our CPU hit its maximum temperature and started to throttle fairly quickly. Um, in terms of the clock speeds, the clock speeds were actually very slightly higher by about 33 megahertz with the fan removed. In terms of our GPU temperatures, these were slightly better with the fan removed by one degree, both at idle and under load. And there was absolutely no difference to the average noise levels, both at idle and under load, with or without the fan. So by picking such a powerful CPU that thermal throttles within about 10 to 15 seconds, this isn't the best configuration for testing how useful the fan at the bottom actually is. But the fact that I removed the fan, the CPU temperature under load was the same, but actually the clock speeds were actually very slightly higher by about 33 megahertz compared to when the fan was actually installed. And our GPU temperatures actually came down with removing the fan. It probably isn't necessary that you have this fan at the bottom. And the fact that Fractal didn't include the fan by standard probably tells you that they're not expecting you to need to install it to get the temperatures under control in the case. So you can either install it or not install it. If you don't install it, you're going to save yourself some money. And you're also going to save yourself a little bit of hassle as well because actually during the build, it was a little bit tricky to get the power supply cables, which come out at the bottom of the power supply, right down pointing towards the fan blades to make sure they're not actually blocking the fan blades. And you have to pay quite a bit of attention during the cable management to make sure that they haven't slipped down to block the fan blades. 
So if I was building again in this case, I would probably leave the bottom fan out and that is going to give you an extra spot to install a two and a half inch drive. So now I want to come on to my experience of building in the case. And with a small form factor case that read 10.4 litres, you would expect this to be a frustrating process. But actually, surprisingly, it wasn't. I think this is largely due to the removal panels at both sides and the top, giving you really good access to the build. The removal brackets we've got for the power supply and also the graphics card really simplified things, allowing you to do some of the installation outside the case. And I think a large part as well to just how well thought out this case is with good quality instruction manual from Fractal Design, outlining the order to do things and the steps to do things to avoid running into any difficulty. Um, some of the advice I would give you to building in this case is make sure you plug in your 8-pin EPS cable to the motherboard before putting the motherboard into the case because once the motherboard is in and upside down, getting that cable plugged in at the bottom is going to be difficult. And the other thing is plug in your 24-pin cable before installing your power supply because once you've got the power supply and motherboard next to each other, getting access to that right-hand side of the motherboard is actually going to be quite difficult. And really, I think the only other thing to mention is if you are going with a fan down at the bottom, just be really careful with the cables coming out of your power supply when you're managing them. Make sure that they haven't actually gone in and blocked the fan blades. So moving on to what I liked about the case, and the first thing I liked about this case is the aesthetics. To me, I think this is a really good looking case with the aluminium panels and the walnut on the front of it. Agreed this may not be to everybody's taste, but to me, I think this looks really, really good. And I particularly like the silver colour that it comes in. The other thing that I like about this case is the build quality. And at the price, you really would expect it to have a high build quality, but it does. The panels, as you take them on and off, feel really, really solid. They're lovely and thick. And as somebody who handles a lot of cases, takes them apart and gets lots of flimsy panels with bits of paint chipping off them in other cases, this is not the case here. These are lovely, thick, well-built panels that's secure with really smart mechanisms and there's lovely nice joints between each of the panels. The removable brackets for the power supply and particularly for the graphics card are lovely and heavy and really well built. So Fractal have spared no expense in putting this case together. It feels great to work with and I also think it looks really good. The other thing that I really liked about this case was the movable spine. I think this is an absolutely brilliant way to adjust each of the compartments to get them set up just the way you want them. And I think it's also really good the way Fractal have allowed you to adjust them anywhere between number one and number seven. You don't have to stop exactly at three. If you want it halfway between three and four, you can do that. So you've got absolutely loads of possibilities to get each of the two compartments lined up so that it fits your hardware perfectly. So moving on to the things I didn't like about the case, and I think the first thing to mention is the complete lack of dust filtration. There's not a dust filter in sight on this case, despite the fact that there's actually quite large cutouts in each of the panels. What's also important to mention is with the case set up for maximum CPU cooling, there's actually a really large cutout at the back of the case beside the motherboard where you can actually fit your whole hand through. So while the case looks absolutely brilliant, and I think probably that's the reason Fractal have gone without the dust filters for aesthetics, I would have some worries about dust accumulating in the case. The second thing I want to mention is I think Fractal have done an absolutely brilliant job in terms of this movable spine, allowing you to adjust it for either maximum CPU cooling or maximum GPU width. The one slight limitation, and I suppose it comes at the case's size at only 10.4 litres, is even with each of the compartments set to the maximum, there is still significant limitations. So with the CPU cooler compartment set to its maximum, you're still limited to a maximum height for your CPU cooler of 77 millimeters, which means you're going with a low profile air cooler and you're not gonna be able to be effectively cool a powerful hot CPU like our 7900X. And that, that would be a reason I wouldn't recommend you go with a really powerful, difficult to cool CPU in the case. And AIO also isn't a great option as we have shown, because really there is only one place to mount a 120 millimeter AIO in this case. It's over in the GPU side and it's going to significantly reduce the space for your GPU. And I also worry it wouldn't be that effective up against your power supply. If we maximize the case for your GPU, 
In terms of width, it's absolutely brilliant. But I think your biggest limitation in this case is actually the length. We've only got up to 322 millimeters in terms of length. And if we've seen what GPUs have done over the last year, they've got absolutely massive. The third thing that I didn't like about the case was the fact that it didn't come with a standoff insertion and removal tool. And there is the option to add standoffs to the back of your power supply bracket, allowing you to set it a little bit further away from your graphics card for improved airflow. And this is something I'm always flagging up in every case review. If you're expecting the user to need to either add standoffs or remove standoffs, you need to include this tool in the case accessory box. And this is something Fractal would normally do. So I'm not quite sure why it isn't included. So we've now reached the stage in review where I need to tell you, should you go out and pick up this case? Well, I think the first thing to say is I think this case is absolutely stunning, although it does come at a price. And that price is in two things. First, financially, it's not a particularly cheap case. But if you do really like the looks of this, and I most definitely do, I would be happy to pay that amount of money to have a PC that looks this good sitting on my desk. The second thing is, I think it really depends on the type of system that you're gonna to want to put together in the case. If you want something like a 7900X, a really powerful CPU, I can't really recommend this case for that. Because as we've mentioned, you are limited to a low profile air cooler. And I don't think that's a particularly good combination because your CPU is gonna run quite hot and you're gonna leave some performance behind because it is gonna thermal throttle. Also, if you're somebody who wants a really long GPU, um, again, it's not gonna be the case for you because you're gonna be limited to 322 millimeters, even though you've got really good options for increasing your GPU width. But if you can build a system then the specifications that Fratch will give you, and you're gonna be happy with the air cooler for your CPU and a slightly smaller GPU, and you like the look of it, and you've got the money to afford it, then I can most definitely recommend it. I think this case is absolutely stunning, and I would be really delighted to have it sitting on my desk, but it wouldn't be for my main powerful system with a really power-hungry, difficult-to-cool CPU. So if you are thinking of doing a build in the Fractal Terra, I have done a full step-by-step -step build guide in it, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed this review, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.